name is Tabitha DeLeon. I work at a bank, that's what I do. What my role at the bank is, is I help people buy houses. In order to buy a house, what do you think you have to have? Credit. Bingo, credit. So this is actually gonna set up your road towards home ownership. That's why I volunteer for Make a Difference, Wisconsin. I have no other reason but to say that I'm passionate about guiding you guys to get to the point of being a responsible credit borrower so that when you do go to make those big purchases, such as a car, we wanna make sure that you're set up for success. We don't want you failing. And that's why we're all here, as passionate as can be, ask me questions, okay? If I'm telling you something and you're not really sure what it is, raise your hand, okay? And then we'll come around and answer those questions. Even a discussion, love discussions. That's how I'm gonna be able to teach you best. So where we left off is talking about uh, minimum payments, okay? So here Jose borrows $100 to buy his shoes and your minimum payment came in the mail already? Yeah? And how much was it for? $10. Did you, did you pay the $10 or how much did you pay? You paid it all off? Excellent. What did he, what did he do? He avoided paying the interest rate. That's what we're going to talk about. How much is this stuff really costing you? So say for example, um, Jose, instead of buying some shoes, he went and bought a TV, okay? He bought a TV at Best Buy and it's $500, this is his very first credit card, so his APR is super wacky high, 18%. His minimum payment came in through the mail, and it said, pay me $15. If he truly, really did pay $15 every time that bill came in the mail, guess what? That is how much interest he's going to pay on this $500 TV. So the $500 TV no longer cost him $500. How much did it actually cost him? $699. Thank you. Here's the interesting part. The TV cost you $500. You're only going to pay $15 a month. It's actually going to charge you almost $200 in interest. You're going to end up paying $700 bucks for the $500 TV, and it takes you four years to actually pay it off. That's a long time, right? Four years of making this $15 minimum payment. Tell me how long you think you'll take to pay off your computer that you bought for $1,000 if you only pay $30 a month. Any guesses? Eight. Eight? Five. Let's see. Eight. Bingo. And the furniture? Twelve. Thirteen. Thirteen. Close. You get it. Here's the thing. What my parents taught me is if you don't have cash don't buy it Tabitha if you don't have money to pay for it don't buy it but you know that's kind of difficult because you know we all want to buy things right and it's okay to borrow money against a credit card again that's what they're there for they're there to help you to get that um, you know mentality of you know borrowing and paying and it is okay to do that but here's what my philosophy is if I need to make a big purchase such as, for example, a furniture, I'm going to borrow it against the credit card because I don't have $2,500 sitting around to go and pay for that furniture, correct? But when my bill comes in the mail, if it says $75 minimum payment, I at least want to put a little bit more than that, okay? Because, say for example, I can't afford to just pay it off because $2,500 is a lot of money, right? What I'm going to do is instead of paying them $75, I'm going to make an effort to pay them more than $75. Follow me? So some months are going to come when you're like, I really can't do more than 75. And that's okay because, again, that's what credit cards are for. But when you can and you have the means to do it, add more towards your minimum payment. And that is how we're going to, A, build credit, get that cycle of borrowing and paying, and you're going to avoid paying interest charges because you're paying off your balance quicker. This is kind of a funny picture. But unfortunately, this is what our country ends up doing. You borrow, you borrow, you borrow, you borrow because, you know, say for example, let's, let's go to this table back here real quick. These lovely ladies. The minute that you step out of high school, do you know what's going to start happening? You're going to start to get all these credit card offers. You're young, you're new, you have no bad credit. They're going to come and attack you and say, hey, borrow from me, borrow from me, borrow from me. They're going to be fighting for each other for your business. How many credit card offers do you think you're going to get? 
a lot, right? So are you just going to get all the credit cards that you can? No. No, exactly, and that's the point. And that's how people end up drowning in debt, because all these credit card offers come through the mail. All of them come through the mail, and you're like, whoo, this guy's giving me $2,000, and this guy's giving me another 1000 and this guy's giving me 500 and if I get this card, I get 5% off. Oh, have you guys been to the store? And your parents are going to go and check out and pay for something. And the cashier's check says, would you like to open a credit card and say 5%? How many of you have heard that? I've heard it so many times, it makes me sick. And that's what they do to you. They try to entice you. They try to entice you to get that credit card so that you do what? Get the credit card, owe them interest, make them money. Follow me? So how to avoid drowning in debt is by being responsible. Credit cards are not bad, but you have to know how to use them. You can't just get them, rank them up, and not pay them because that's how people end up like that. Credit cards all the way up to their head. They can't keep up with it, and big trouble, right? Remember what we talked about and the fact that I tried to be you know, a little aggressive when paying my credit cards, if I have to borrow a big, big, you know, lump sum of money to do a big purchase such as furniture, okay? 3% of your balance, remember what we learned, that's what they're going to charge you for minimum. That payment is going to come from $75. And it's going to take you 13 years to pay it off if you only pay the minimum, okay? But say you make an effort and you send an extra $25 along with that $75 payment. What happens then? Instead of 13 years, two and a half years, you pay it off. Do you see how much of a difference that makes? And it's just $25 extra. Follow me? So if you have to borrow something for such a big purchase as a new bedroom set or something like that, that's okay to do. Your payment comes in through the door. Make that extra effort because it's going to save you, look at how much money. $1,600. That's a lot of money, right? What can you do with $1,600? So this is your money, right? You work really hard for it. You won't put it in your pocket because you worked for it. Now, obviously, you buy the furniture and you are, you know, blessed to have this kind of money sitting around. You know, you can use them. You know, you can, you can use the credit card so that you don't have to pay it off immediately. You have that billing cycle, right? of that 30 days where they're not going to charge you any interest and then the bill comes in the mail and you have the means to just pay it off, bravo, right? But you know, most of us are not that fortunate, so you're going to have to actually pay it slowly. But if you are going to pay it slowly, remember, don't just do the minimum. Even a dollar extra will help. Okay, so we're going to compare credit cards. There should be a little handout on your table that it looks like this. So go ahead and grab one of those. So I know the ladies back there are seniors, but who else is seniors here? Seniors, you're going to leave graduation, you're going to get to your house, and I almost want to guarantee you, you're going to have a credit card offer in the mail. So what's going to happen is you're going to get all these credit card bills, and you're like, oh my goodness, how do I even know which one is good and which one is bad? Take this handout with you. If you can keep anything out of our lesson today, it's this handout. Take it with you so that you can use it when you go to compare your own credit cards. So what we're going to do is we're going to compare three credit cards, A, B, and C. Is there an introductory rate to these? What is it? And for how long is the introductory rate? So tell me, Evelise, which one do you think has the best introductory rate? Uh, she thinks the 0% for one month is the, the best introductory rate. Go ahead. 1.9 for 12 months. I actually would agree with you, Terry. And Evelise, the reason why I would agree with her is because she has a longer term for a lower rate. So the 0% is true, you would get it, but you would only get it for one month versus you can get one for 1.99 for a whole 12 months. So this is the kind of comparison you want to do. You kind of want to check it out and see, okay, what does this one have and this one have and just kind of compare the overall picture because yes, the 0% seems very attractive, but then realize that after that one month, it's going to be way higher than the other cards. Tell me, uh, somebody from this table here, is there an application fee for these cards? Which one has an application fee? Card B. If you're comparing card B and card C so far with the introductory rate, the actual interest rate thereafter, and now throw the application fee in the mix, which one do you think is better, B or C? C. 
see still winning, right? Annual fees, do you guys know what an annual fee is? <laughs> Yearly. Okay. Why do you think you have to pay an annual fee? Maybe um, the annual fee for you having the card. For you having the card. That's it. So do you want a card with an annual fee or do you want a card that doesn't have an annual fee? A card without. That's right. What is the late payment, if any, on these cards? Tell me which one you think has the best deal when it comes to the late payment. Card C. Card C. Tell me why. So card C so far, you guys, no annual fee, 1.99 for 12 months, that's pretty good, 16% thereafter, and the late fee is $25. What's the late fee, and when do they charge you that? When you don't pay it on time. And then what else can happen when you pay late? Do you guys know? Credit gets impacted, and then something else happens too, sometimes. They can raise your APR. Did you know that? If you make a late payment, your credit card can actually increase your APR. So where are we at? Which card would you pick? Who would pick card A? Who would pick card B? Who would pick card C? That's right. So again, you're going to get a lot of these. And when you're choosing a card, you guys sit down and analyze it. Check it out. And, and the biggest thing for me, honestly, is the annual fee. The thing is, is that I try not to use my credit cards that much. I buy something and I try to pay it off right away. And I'll tell you why I use my credit cards that way. Have you guys heard of rewards? So every time you make a purchase on that credit card, they end up giving you like points or cash or whatever, right? Is I use my card for the rewards. I pay it, so then when my bill comes, I pay it off in full. I owe no interest, I get rewards. You have to be really disciplined to get to that point. So saving first, right, so that you have the money put aside. Budgeting next, so that you know what you can afford. Then the credit card and the rewards.